Thanks for joining me today at KL Tech Videos for another video. This time, I'm going to show you how to deploy your own media server. So this will entail installing the ARS apps, which if you're not familiar with what they are, they are a method to download your 100% legitimate, totally legitimate, media content, and then using another application such as MB uh, or Jellyfin or Plex, give it a place to watch that downloaded content, which is great for your legitimate content. So let's get into it and let's see what we've got to look at. Usually on this channel, I do separate out each individual compose file or stack. However, I believe it is easier for beginners, um, and if you are a beginner, this is where you're going to be right now, just keeping it all together on the one compose. I understand that's not popular with everyone, and that's absolutely fine. Feel free to break this up uh, into the individual compose files if you would like, but if you are watching this video, I assume you are a beginner, and we're going to take it as easy as we can from that perspective. Hence why the channel is by amateurs for amateurs. So we're going to start off with the Prowler Compose. Uh, and essentially, uh, you should already be familiar with your Compose files if, you, if you're watching these videos at this point. But I'm going to leave everything in the description below so that you can literally just copy, edit, paste. So on, a, some, on some of these services, you'll notice that I use Nightly or Develop, things like that. If you want, you could just change that to Latest. Uh, for everything we do going down here, or just follow me and use what I've been using. Now, we are going to put this into a network called the Ars Network, just to keep everything together. In I run my server on Windows 11 Pro. Um, that's just what I choose to do. Other people will find other servers like a Linux and Ubuntu and all those other distros. If you're using that, fine, but you will have to slightly modify uh, the things that you follow me in, such as how you map your volumes, your PUID and PGID, things like that you will need to change for whatever suits your area. But this is a Windows guide primarily. So if you're watching this, I assume you are following this on Windows. Using Docker, might I add. We're going to keep these the same. We're going to keep this the same because that's where my time zone is and that's going to be the same pattern all the way down this uh, compose file now in prowler we are going to need to establish the configuration directory a backup directory and a downloads directory for the download client now although prowler doesn't actually download anything it does synchronize a lot of the settings across the different apps so it's there it's an option we're going to fulfill it um, you will also notice that on some of these, I have changed the ports because I am using things on those ports already. You, If you need to change the port, you just change the left-hand side of the colon, not the right-hand side, uh, to anything that you need. So first of all, if we go in our Docker stuff directory, we're going to create a folder called ours. And in there, I'm going to create four of the folders that we're going to be using. I think it's full. We're going to have Prowler, Sonar, Radar, LiDAR, and Reader. I think I spelled that all right. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Starting with Prowler. If we go back, you'll see we need a config directory, a backup directory, and a downloads directory. Now, on my setup on Windows with uh, Docker and using Dockage over that, uh, which you'll see in a second, it will actually create the directories for me um, past this point. And I go to config. And on the end where it says Prowler, I'm just going to put the config directory in. That will now prompt me to create the directory as we start this up so it'll be a bunch of yeses uh, of course if you go into your docker 
and you go to settings, resources, file sharing, we can actually approve Docker stuff in one go like that and apply. That should stop so many prompts coming up. Um, the next directory is our backup directory. So on the end of that, so that's our backup data directory created. And last of all, we're going to create our downloads directory. Now the downloads directory, by the way, is going to be accessed by multiple applications. So we're not going to put the downloads directory directly in Prowler. This is the place where we're also going to set our torrent downloader to download the files too. So we're going to put that under the ours directory because a lot of other things are going to access that. So we're going to move down and we're going to see our sonar. Sonar, so Prowler, I should have given an overview here. So Prowler is basically where you're going to have all your indexes, uh, all your torrent websites to get your 100% legitimate torrents from. Uh, all your uh, torrent sites you're going to index, we're going to be putting into Prowler. And I'll demonstrate this as we move on throughout the tutorial. So that's what Prowler is for. Sonar is going to be what controls the TV shows side of things for your copyright-free, 100% legitimate TV shows. Again, I'm using develop, but you could change this to latest if you want. Ours networks, time zone, users, set. So we're going to go back over to the directories. So now. And then we're going to put it in here. So we're going to put Sonar config. Notice, because we're on Windows, we're also using backslashes on the bind side, on the left side of the colon. And then obviously, as it goes into the container, it's forward slashes. It's important to note the difference there. We're going to do the same for backup. And you may also note that we're also nesting all the directories under data apart from configs of data backup, data TV shows, data downloads, the same as up here, data backup, data downloads. Why are we doing this? Because the reason we do this is for better input output performance. So I don't know if it's because of the way these things are coded or developed, um, but when it comes to your things like Sonar moving your TV shows from the downloads directory into your library, uh, it does so at a greater speed if they're nested like that. Not 100% sure why, but that's, uh, that's something that does happen. So we've got a backup there. And then this part here is basically where your TV shows are going to be stored, where they're going to be accessed from um, by Plex, um, MB, Jellyfin, things like that. So we're going to name this something along the lines of um, TV shows. And if we had multiple ones or multiple drives, we would we could label it TV shows one, TV shows two, etc. And unless you've got more libraries, we'll just get rid of that. And then finally, like I said, the downloads folder that we created. which will be in the R's. And we can just copy it from above here. Because that's going to be the folder that we all use together. Again, same setup, network R's, time zone. This time it's going to be in radar. Pretty much in the same way that we're using the downloads directory. Well, some people, most people, will have um, a centralized location for their films, their TV shows. I have mine spanning over four different drives. Um, I'm doing this simple, basic setup just to just to show you um, on a most on the most basic level how to get this running. Um, And again, all this will be left in its entirety for copy and paste below for you to uh, have a look at yourself.
I'll be back up. LIDAR, same again. And it's important for us to create a backup directory because if you ever modify or mess with your uh, setup at all, it'll be easy to restore. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that as well later. And last of all, radar. So sonar for TV shows, radar for movies, uh, radar for books. And for all intensive purposes, we've now completed our compose file. So with that completed in its entirety, let's select all and give it a bash. So if we go over to our dockage, um, dockage is basically like Portainer. Um, I think it's got a few more pros. Go and check out the video below if you want to install dockage or just docker compose up or whatever you do to launch your compose file once created. So we're going to hit compose here. Copy all the, uh, sorry, select all and paste our file in that we've just edited in Notepad++. In Notepad++. You see all our containers are down the side here. We're going to call this the as stack. Okay, now I have to find the network properly. It's going to pull all our containers. Now you are going to need to give this a good few minutes to initialize because as you can see in the terminal here it's going absolutely crazy and that's because all these containers are being set up together here eventually the terminal will stop uh, and everything will be done um, in terms of setting itself up and initializing the next step is for us to configure everything but before we do that i want to first install a torrent download or a torrent client uh, in my case it's going to be qubit torrent you can use whatever you like but for the purposes of this tutorial we are going to want to install that windows x64 because i'm running a 60 bit bit version of windows so with that uh, installed the first thing i want to do here just for security purposes and this is going to be a common theme as we move through the, as we move through the tutorial is in the web ui we're going to enable it we're going to go down here to admin and then we're going to create a password. Uh, and you could change that uh, author, uh, username if you want as well. We're also going to bypass authentication for clients on the local host. Uh, and because I'm already running something on port 8080, I'm going to change this to port 8061. But you can leave that as is or change it with me. Um, it won't hurt to do that. And we're going to click apply. That has now got the Qubit Torrent web interface going. We're going to say change the default save path here in the options and download section, um, and we need to match that up. With our ours apps downloads folder. Now, again, you might already have this set up in a location uh, where you, your torrents download to. That's perfectly fine. And you'll set this directory to wherever you have that set. And that goes for all the directories that we set in the compose file. If you have locations for these, use those locations. This is purely for a tutorial basis so that you can follow along easily. Um, mine is, is not set up like this in my production. It has all their own locations. So I have a uh, several drives for movies, several drives for TV shows, things like that for my 100% le legitimate content. Music, the works, including the downloads location. I have it set up uh, in a central location on one of the drives as well. Um, but for the purposes of the tutorial, we are going to go ahead and do this. Uh, apply and OK. Hooray. We can now go back to Dockage. And if we scroll up a little bit, the thing I like about Dockage as well is it's going to tell us exactly which port everything is running on. And the very first thing that we want to set up is going to be Prowler. So we, if we click 9697, or if you go to your web browser and you open localhost 9697, this will get us on Prowler. Now, all of the ARS apps, uh, as of late, um, are enforcing an authentication. Um, so we need to create one, um, and I prefer the forms login page myself. So create yourself a username and password. Best practice is to use a password manager like 
uh, Vault Warden, which I do. And it's also best practice for every single one of these R apps we go through to create something completely different for each of them. And then just save it away in the, in the vaults. But for the purposes of this, I'm going to use just my, my basic one because I'm going to be deleting these all after the video. So I'll hit save. And we're in. So in Prowler, let's get some of the background set up. If we click system where there's a big red number one, this indicates there is currently a problem with this configuration. The problem is there's no indexes enabled. There's also no download client. So we're going to sort that out now. So if we go to settings and download clients, we're going to hit the little plus icon and scroll down until we find our torrent client. In our case, it's Qubit Torrent. We are running on the local host. Um, and we're on port, if you remember, 8061. And if you remember, we gave Qubit Torrent a login. Now, although we already bypass local uh, authentication, it's good security practice to make sure we put a security login in, and that's why we've done that. Click test. And it can't find um, Qubit Torrent running uh, on local host. So that's okay. If that occurs for you, we will just put the IP address of the system in. IP config. We shall go up here. This is the IP configuration of the machine that we're running on. Okay. Oh, admin. We put admin in. I think it might be capital A as well. No, it's working. There you go. So it's, it's, it is good to get that. So does that work on local host? No, it definitely needs the IP address uh, of the system there for whatever reason. But there we go. We'll, we'll play ball. So uh, make sure you're using the correct uh, username and password that we set up earlier on uh, and put the IP address of your the server that you're running this on, the host of the machine that Qubit Torrent is installed on. And we're going to click save. So there's two types of uh, indexes on Prowler. You've got indexes that will be on this page, on the main page, which are basically all the torrent websites. The other types of indexes are proxies. Play Solver, or in my case, I do use um, Nord as well. But I've also got that set up on my router level, so I don't actually need to, to put that in here. So we'll come back and add some indexes in uh, a little bit. What I want to do now is go on to configuring Sonar. So let's get into that. Back over to Dockage. So now, which I've got running on 8989. Like it, like Prowler, it's going to ask us to create that login, which we're going to save. And now we're going to set Sonar up. So if we go down to the A, we can see no torrent clients available, no indexes have been synchronized. So we need to get those two things set up. So let's get the download client set up first. Qubit torrent. And let's give it a quick test. Yes, everything's working. Now we are going to need to map the remote pathways as well. So if we click this plus button below, find our qubit torrent. Now the remote path is the path that we use on Windows. So if I load up this again, and any, on any of the sections we've created, we, we've, we've got the downloads directory is the same. So just to the right of the colon, we will copy that. Go back to Sonar and paste that in there. And this is telling Sonar how to map that directory. Now, if we go for the local path, the local path is, is basically the other side, the right-hand side of that in the container, which, as we know, is forward slash data downloads. So if we tap, uh, tap forward slash, you will find data and you will find our downloads. And that's how we map that out. And that'll be the same for Sonar, Radar, LiDAR, and Radar. Save. Now, something else we want to do is, in Settings, go down to General. Scroll down until we find the API key. Copy this API key. Head back into Prowler. Go to Settings. And you'll see Apps. Click on Applications. And we're going to set up Sonar in this instance. We're going to come to the bottom here and we'll see API key. Paste the API key in. Now, I know earlier on we had a bit of trouble with localhost, so let's give it a go. No. So we're going to want to put the um, directories 
uh, sorry, the URLs in uh, for the system. The IP address of this system. Now, remember, on Prowler, we've got the port changed slightly, 9697. So it defaults to 9696, but because I've changed the port, I need to match that up, 9697. And Sonar is on 8989, so that's, we can leave it like that. If we do test now, it's got a good sync. Everything's synced there. Full sync, be careful with tags. We'll get into this later on, um, but we'll leave that blank for now. Now that's all working, we're gonna click save, is we need to add the root folder. Uh, and the root folder for Sonar, if we go back here uh, and we go to Sonar, is basically the directory where we're going to have our TV shows. This is where the TV shows are stored on your computer and where Sonar is going to put them after it downloads them. And it's going to keep them regulated and updated there. So we've already mapped in the Compose where that goes to, but now we need to map it from within the container, which, as we know, is data TV shows. So if we click on here, add new, library import, yeah, we'll click on data TV shows and click OK. This has now mapped our TV shows directory as a root folder. So that's the other part of that done. And lastly, in settings, if we go back to settings, uh, we go back to general. At the top left here, we'll click show advanced. Scroll down to backups. And we're going to do forward slash data, because that's where everything is we've set, and backup. And we'll click save. That's Sonar in a nutshell pretty much done. The next thing we're going to want to set up after Sonar is Radar. So Sonar for TV shows, Radar for movies. So that'll be on port 7878. Like everything else, we're going to set up a login page. One of many ways. So we'll save that. <clears throat> and then basically the same setup. We're going to head straight for download clients. Qubit torrent. Yes, don't forget our port mapping directory with data and downloads here. E general settings, scroll down, get the API key. Hola, settings, apps, we've got Sonar set up. Let's get radar set up. Scroll down, paste the API key and give that a test. And Radar and Prada are synced. Save. Don't forget, in general, show advanced top left. Scroll down. Backup. Backups. Save. Simple, quick, done. Next one we're going to move on to is LiDAR. Four. Oh, I'll tell you what we didn't do on Radar. We didn't create the uh, root folder, did we? Movies. Library import. Start import. Data. Movies. Okay, there's our root folder. Uh, while we're here, settings, general, scroll down, API key, go to Prowler, plus LiDAR, scroll down, API key, paste, 9697. LiDAR, Prowler are connected. Great. Back to LiDAR, show advanced settings, scroll down. Add new root folder. Movies. In case you didn't catch it, do not name this movies. I totally forgot where it was, and I'm in LiDAR, which is for music. So instead of movies, put music. I went back and changed this later. The path will be forward slash data. Oh, sorry. This is music. Data music folder. Quality any? Yes, 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 yes. Let's go to general. We've put our backup in. Great. Uh, don't forget the download client. The same kind of setup. And you have to do this for every single one of them. Don't forget our remote port mappings. Data downloads. And settings. Download clients. I did that already for radar. 
Okay. And then finally, we want to do the same thing for Reader, which is on 8787 or localhost 8787. Uh, settings, general, get that API key. Prowler, add, reader, scroll down, API key, test, yes, there we go. So as you can see, Prowler now has all our core apps being synchronized. And this is, we'll get back to this later when we're adding indexes to this uh, as well. So I believe we're pretty much set up, no indexes, that's okay. If that's the only errors, no indexes, yes. And that's okay. That's what we want to see. We want to see just that being the only issue. Uh, oh, read art needs the download client. It's easy to skip over these things. Qubit. Yes, remote mapping. And downloads and save. And then we just add our root folder for our book. We'll just put as books. The path forward slash data books because we've already set that up in the compose save so that should leave that with only the two no index errors brilliantio so that was a pretty sped up uh, configuration of all the apps but slowly you could get the gist of it set your api to prowler set your download client set your backup directory and set your root folders once you've completed those four things on every one of those apps you know everything's working. And then you can just do a quick check if you want to make sure everything's set up. Eventually, you should be left with this. These are the only two errors on any of the apps you should see. Now, everything else has been configured. That leaves us with going back into Prowler to start setting up our indexes. So at this point, we can now start adding our indexes. So the indexes are simple. We're in Prowler. We're on 9697. We're going to hit Add Indexer. And then you will find basically a large list of different indexes that you can add. Now, um, for those of you who have NZBs, or if you don't know what NZBs are, they are a faster, more secure version of downloading uh, things that you would normally probably get from torrent sites. Um, I do have a really good guide on how to, to set those up, and I'll link that in the description below as well. So check that out. Let's try a good old fashioned kick ass. Uh, and if we do the dot two variant, there we go, that'll work. And just remember, Torrent Site's not all about illegal content. There is, and we don't endorse that on this channel anyway, you can get f a lot of perfectly legal and copyright files from these torrent sites. So don't believe it when everyone says that, especially uh, those in authority. Um, so yeah, we know that's working. So we'll click save. It's as simple as that, adding indexes, and you can add as many as you like. Once you have added that, the next thing is to sync app indexes. And what that does is all the applications that we set up earlier on, LiDAR, Radar, Reader, Sonar, it will now synchronize that index across all those different apps for you, which is another really cool thing. If we jump back into um, Dockage, by the way, <clears throat> uh, and we scroll down to Sonar, and we open Sonar, and we go over to settings and indexes you'll see that kickass torrents has been synchronized now you can obviously set different things um like how many cedars you want um you know to be in this before it starts actually pulling a file if we click uh, the advanced button um i personally put that down to like eight because that gives us a good thing seed ratio you can have at one i also put seed time as one so if after a minute things aren't doing anything um just stop it the reason why i do that is because then it frees up uh whichever app the file has been downloaded into so it can move it into your folder for example if it was sonar not it'll stop downloading sorry it'll stop seeding after a minute and then move that over into your folder you can choose how long you want that to be i know some people like to see it for a longer time that's all down to you once you've dictated that you can click save okay so if we jump into uh, radar here uh, and we do a fire a, a search for a film such as uh night of the living dead 1968 which is now a copyright free uh film bearing in mind um Prowler has synchronized the indexer across now, um, which I'll show you here, as you can see. So we'll look for that film, and we'll see that we do have access to that film. 
we will click on it. You at this point can select things like the quality of the file, bearing in mind this will download probably a very high file size, um, which um, we'll, we can go into and change in a second. You'll pick your root folder. In this case, we've only got the one root folder, but if you had multiple libraries during the setup, you'd be able to pick them in this location. And then you see your movies one, movies two, movies three, things like that. Um, so we'll go for this, we'll leave it at this and start search for missing movies straight away. And it's as simple as this now. Radar will forward this request over to Prowler where your indexes are. It will find the indexes URL and details and start a search. When that returns a result, it comes back into radar and it will turn purple like so, saying downloading, and it will add a one to activity. This is pulling down a Blu-ray 1080p file. Like I thought, it would be, it's gonna be quite probably a high file size, maybe eight or nine gigs. And if we click uh, refresh there, you'll see that the progress bar is there. So I imagine if we go over to Qubit Torrent at this point. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. Look, seven gigs. Um, it's not a real normal file size you're gonna you're gonna want to get for these things unless you've got a massive hard drive, uh, like myself, like sixty five terabytes of storage. I assume you don't have sixty five terabytes of storage, so this is gonna be a pretty uh thing for yourself. So the best way to get around this would be to go into settings and quality. And here are where you can change that. I mean, look at this. They've got 5.9 gigabit per hour file sizes here. You can uh, literally move these down to what you think are sane values uh, and do that for every one of them all the way down to the bottom here, whatever you think is a sane value for yourself, whatever, you, whatever you're looking for, and then click save. And then when you do your searches for other films in the future, your whole legitimate uh, copyright free film such as this, you will be able to, if we click refresh again, we'll see there's a 52 minute wait. Probably not a lot of availability on this uh, file, but it's pretty old, uh, 1968. But you get the idea, and this is the same process throughout all of the Ars apps. For Sonar for your TV, Radar for your films, LiDAR for your music, Radar for your books, same scenario. And the more indexes that you add in Prowler, the higher the chance of finding the file you're after, and potentially, depending on how many people are seeding, um, the, the faster the, the download is going to be. Again, like I mentioned earlier on, I highly, highly recommend checking out Usenet and NZBs as an alternative to torrents. And you can do that in the video in the description below by myself. Now, at this moment in time, you could jump into your MB, Plex, Jellyfin, whatever media server that you have, and point the folders to the TV shows, to the movies, to the music, to the books. And that's how you synchronize those apps and get everything automated and working together. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoy and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you very much.